I'm Don and this is Mella. And we're seeking opportunities for adventure across America in our custom converted 40 foot bus. We just arrived in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we're staying in a pop up RV park. We're just steps away from a world record setting event that wasn't even on our radar three weeks ago. And we're taking you with us. Welcome to the 50th Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's early. Good morning from a very sleepy rehabitate this morning. We got up at 4 a.m. because it's the first day of the balloon fiesta. Luckily, our RV spot's about a uh, 10 minute walk away. Looks like the closest parking lot's already full and there's a massive line of cars just waiting to get into the parking right next to the balloon festival field. As we stumbled through the darkness with the rest of the crowd, the festival opened up with an amazing drone light show. Celebrating New Mexico's rich heritage. As the team started preparing their balloons, somehow magically, we found ourselves front row to the next event, the Dawn Patrol. Watching the first balloons light up in the morning darkness right in front of our eyes. It was exhilarating hearing the balloon's engine roar just 10 feet away from us. Lighting up the darkness with their beautifully patterned tapestries. And feeling the heat of the flames against your face in the cold morning air. This was our first encounter with the zebra. These launch directors coordinate the takeoff of the balloons, making sure they have a safe space for liftoff. In the Dawn Patrol event, select pilots take off in the dark. This allows them to share the wind speeds and directions at different altitudes with fellow balloonists who are preparing to take off after sunrise. With the sun finally lighting up the skies, hundreds of balloon teams took to the launch field, preparing for the next event, Mass Ascension. We decided to hang out and watch one team prepare for liftoff, and see what it takes to get the balloon ready to ascend into the sky. Yeah, ready? Go. It's incredible to watch this team work together to get the balloon up in the air. It's 
It's apparently the technical name for the balloon or the bag is an envelope. It's made of nylon because it's both light and really strong. And then the basket, same thing. It's a wicker basket. It's really sturdy, but it's also lightweight. And down they totally rely on the wind like the wind blows them and they don't know where they're going to end up all the time one of the reasons Albuquerque is the balloon capital of the world is because what's known as the Albuquerque box the unique winds blow one direction in the lower atmosphere and in the other direction in the upper atmosphere and since balloon pilots only have control over going up and down they're at the mercy of the winds as to where they will land. So just in case they have this chase crew, in case they can't come back and land on the launch pad, the chase crew follows them and will collect them wherever they land. Conditions are best for flying in the Albuquerque box just after sunrise and right before sunset. over 600 balloons taking off from this 76 acre launch pad. They expect about three quarter million guests and there are 22 countries taking part. I think the thing that freaks me out the most is not being able to steer. <laughs> you just can go up and down and that's it. Incredible experience. The energy of the crowd is amazing, cheering everybody on as they go up into the air. But I think like the crowd and the energy, probably you just have like a big adrenaline rush. I can't imagine what it's like up there though. So many of them. Just when you think there can't be any more balloons, there's just more and more. And it just, it feels like this like magical world to me. Like you're in some kind of wonderland. It doesn't seem like Earth anymore. <laughs> it's like we're in a fairy tale. There's a whole bunch of like regular shaped balloons with all kinds of different colors and patterns. They're really pretty. But then there's some of these special shaped balloons and they could be all kinds of crazy things. We saw a monkey and an alien and a devil thing. I don't even know what that one is out there. How many says 95? Wow. And you get a you get one of these every time? 
What? The, the book? pins? Oh, of course. <laughs> yes, I've collected all the number pins. It's my favorite. Another thing that's crazy about the balloon festival, the launch pads, where all the balloons are. When we got out there first thing this morning, everyone just walks right out there. It's not like you just stand back and observe or sit in the stands. You're right next to the balloons while they take off. <laughs> That's your first ride up. Oh boy. Oh boy. What a rocky start. <laughs> Those people, I hope that wasn't their first time up in a balloon because they didn't even get off the ground and things were getting crazy. This is Magic Avenue. So there's all these plaques going all the way down with the names and dates of, of people who've taken part in the balloon fiesta. I hate early mornings. I hate big crowds like this. But I'm so glad we came. It's just like an incredible experience that you've got to you've got to just experience it. This morning we saw all the people getting settled in on these buses, and now we, we're like stopping to look at the buses. There's some nice Prevos, a few MCIs. Nice new MCIs. <laughs> <laughs> Albuquerque is also known as the founding place of breakfast burrito. The lines for the breakfast burritos are a little long for us though, so <laughs> I think we're gonna go find a breakfast burrito somewhere else. Outside of the fiesta. Yeah, <laughs> and go eat it with the kitties. Back in the bus. Yeah. Good morning. It is day two of the fiesta. And today we opted to avoid the crowds, just roll out of bed, walk outside, and enjoy the balloons. Last night, pretty much all the festivities were canceled due to weather, and this morning was kind of touch and go, but balloons are going up. This RV pop-up park that we're at, which is just basically a gravel lot, we don't even have to leave the RV camp area to look out and see these balloons. And big thanks to Jordan for hooking us up with the spot here. So as you can see, a lot of the others staying in this RV park just pull up their chairs and enjoy the view from here. It's about $50 a night and we could choose our spot. Today we thought we'd take you guys down and take a look at the Balloon Fiesta RV parking lots and compare notes. So this is the North RV lot. It's about $100 per night. It is dry camping, and I believe that you get two passes to the Fiesta with that. Don, how are you? I'm Mella. Mella, how are you? Nice Good, to meet you. Nice. And action. I'm Tom Atencio, this is my wife Shelly Atencio. We just celebrated our 38th anniversary. We're from Denver, Colorado, and we're down here at the uh, Balloon Fiesta. We got just lucked out because they just parked people as you come in, uh -huh. in this lot. They pulled us in here and parked us here. I'm like going, it's right there. We're in the front row. So what's it like when the balloons, are they coming right over the top of you? This whole sky is just full. You know, you're boondocking, you don't have any power or, uh, you, know, you know, no water and sewer down here, mm -hmm. but it's just, so you're just out here dry camping and it's, it's worth it. I don't know how many RVs can fit in here, but there's got to be at least 300, 400 RVs. At least. It's a pretty good spot. I mean, they're parked right here, and all you got to do is walk right over here, 
probably two minutes at most of a stroll and then the entrance is over here. This up here is the president's compound. They're sitting right at the bluff overlooking the launch pad. It's obviously the best view, but you pay for it. It's $250 a night. I think you get two or four passes with that too, but it does look like a lot of them they save their seat right along the bluff to watch. They also have full hookups. The President's Compound is right next to VIP East. This up here on the bluff is VIP East. It's $100 a night and it is dry camping as well. And this is the West Lot. Same deal, $100 dry camping. And it looks like it's where all the Airstreams come to hang out. The West Lot also has an entrance just minutes from the camp. They have bike valet here, so if you're staying somewhere in town, you can ride your bike in here. Also, if you're staying at the South RV Lot, you might want to bring a bike, because apparently it's a half hour walk to that park. South Lot is the biggest RV park of the Fiesta. The South Lot is the cheapest lot to stay in. It ranges from $40 to $90, depending if you want to do the dry camping over there. And it looks like right here, you got full hookups. No matter which RV park you're staying at, I definitely think staying in an RV or camper or something like that is the way to do it. Even if you need to rent one to come here, because they do have courtesy shuttles that take you down to the field but you got your home. You can come back after getting an early morning and have a nap. You can cook your own lunch. You don't have to spend the entire day there. You don't have to battle in the morning with that crazy traffic and parking. If you don't have an RV, you also have the option of glamping. And seeing as Albuquerque is the balloon capital of the world, it's only fitting that this is where the Albuquerque Balloon Museum is. Think you want to cross the trip to the Atlantic Ocean in a hot air balloon? Definitely not. And they have an observation deck and they serve breakfast and dinner for the small price of a ticket. You get to have this view. Holy moly, isn't this the best? You can see the entire field because you're raised up. You have a clear view of the sky, no obstacles. I mean, if you've got the money to do it in style, this is where it's at. Hey, just imagine sitting here, eating your breakfast. I mean, you can't get the full picture right now because there's only like one balloon that's just landed on the field. You know, just picture the sky is filled with balloons. A fiesta hosts hundreds of pop-up shops, food vendors, and there's even live entertainment. I'm Cameron Freeman. I'm piloting here for Rainbow Riders. How long have you been doing this for? Well, I started about 15 years ago. And how did you get into it? Like, do you need to have some other kind of flying experience? No, I started on Chase Crew and spent enough time around the balloons, get thrown in every once in a while, get a nice flight. It's like, well, maybe I should do this myself. We've been watching and I'm just so curious what it's actually like up there, because it looks like you're traveling really slow, but does it feel slow when you're in the basket? Well, you know, it kind of depends on where you are. If you're close to the ground and say going 10 miles per hour, it's going to feel a lot faster, but getting up like we do to 3,000 feet, even higher, you don't have that same effect. Okay, so landing. Yes. 
I haven't seen anybody land yet. Like, it's it's arguable if it's crashed or not. There's no landing gear on these things. Yeah. Always find the ground. I haven't missed the ground yet. It's uh -oh. pretty easy to land once you ran out of fuel. Well, on the way back actually today, I saw somebody landed in a convenience store parking lot. Definitely land in some crazy spots and they get to be less crazy the more you do it. And how many years have you done the Fiesta? Uh, this is my second Fiesta doing rides, uh, but I've been out for three Fiestas. Thank you so much for chatting with yeah, us. Yeah, nice was, to meet you. It's really Thank good to you meet so you. Yeah, welcome to Fiesta. After talking to Cameron, there's one more thing on our list we were hoping we'd get to see. So yesterday morning, it was canceled due to weather. So today is our last morning that could possibly have a balloon ascension. And it was touch and go this morning. We stayed in bed until the green flag was announced and the balloons went up. And what's so freaking cool is the wind's actually blowing them to our RV park. That guy's coming down fast. He is coming down, but is he just coming down? Chase crews arrived for these rainbow riders and this other rainbow riders with a big basket, probably the 12 people basket, is also gonna land right here in the parking lot. This is so cool. Oh, this one's going down the right over there. Then we saw a balloon fast approaching the parking lot and Don decided it was time for him to assist as landing crew. Right of before it champagne got involved oh, way back when uh, they did the yeah, first hot air balloon, they saw the fire and they thought it was a I dragon. So this was like way, way back then. <laughs> so they <laughs> shot it down. And that's really expensive that they keep like killing all our balloons. So how are we going to do that? So they said, send a bottle of champagne, yeah. show it to the, the village people that were from Earth and that were people and share it with them and maybe they won't shoot the balloon down. So that's oh how the champagne got involved. <laughs> was this your first hot air balloon ride? Yes, this is our first time in New Mexico, first time to Balloon Fiesta, yes. Oh, perfect. It's very, very fun, very exciting. My name is Eric Perdue, and I'm a pilot in training. My name is Dawn, I'm Eric's mom. Uh, we've talked to other pilots, we haven't talked to any pilots in training yet. Oh shoot, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is like my fifth or sixth time. Were you nervous the first time you were doing it? I've been around balloons my whole life. So. Okay. So you've been up a million times, but the yeah. only four Ever since I was yeah. like five. Oh, okay. So this is, this is the life I live. We're from Ohio, Northwest, in oh, Toledo. Okay. So yeah, it was quite a hike to get up here. We had a friend who had a balloon, so we were going for him for years. And then Brad decided, you know what, I'm, I'm ready. He got his license, and that was six or seven years ago. I can't believe we actually caught them. It's been hit or miss. Like you have to come for longer because obviously it's weather dependent. There are gonna be days where they don't fly. You just gotta take advantage of the days that they do and make sure you're there and ready to show up. Whether it was getting to be up close to the balloon glow in the early hours. Learning how the crew prepares for liftoff into the sky or sitting meditatively soaking in the spectacle of hundreds of balloons. 
The one thing we found over and over at the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta was joy. Three weeks ago, the Balloon Fiesta wasn't even on our radar, and we could have easily turned down the invite as we had other plans. But our instincts told us there was something special about this opportunity, and living as nomads is sharpening our intuition. As we travel our own road, we're finding joy in every mile. Just up from us is a couple of rentals. These are actually available on Airbnb. Our friend Jordan rents them out. If you guys are interested in coming to the Balloon Festival or renting some trailers while you're in New Mexico, look up Echo One Adventures.